Hey all, it's Ryan the Tone Geek, and today I'm starting my YouTube series of Steel, steel String Singer Number no. 2, uh, Dumble Style Amp. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I still have a few more chassis available, so if you want to follow along, you know, and build your own with me, I figure it's going to be about $1,100 total investment, um, three, you know, $350 with the chassis uh, for those who, who've bought one, who want to buy one, and then all the transformers, all the parts. I'm going to guesstimate it's, it's about $1,100. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's encouraging because this is, who knows how much this would cost if the number two was actually went up for sale, for auction, whatever, how much that would go for, especially since John Mayer uses it, or has used it in the past, and some say that that was his holy grail tone period. So I don't know. I'm pretty excited about this project. Uh, a couple extra things, so I did all the design work you might have saw, I did all the silkscreen artwork. My buddy Brian, who's ex-Marine, um, or retired Marine, or off-duty Marine, what do they call that? Uh, he did the powder coating, so my good old buddy there. And I'm pretty proud of how these came out. Real thick, you know, 5052 aluminum, and this thing's sturdy as heck. And the boards, I'm going to get to that in a second, but the boards from Hoffman Amps are super thick and equally impressive. They're 0.135 thick, so they're, they're really thick. They're more than an eighth inch. Um, and I had these made from Hoffman Amplifiers. You upload my do-it-yourself layout creator files to a Hoffman Amps website, and sure enough, you get one of these in the mail. Uh, that was one of the main reasons why I did the design work and do-it-yourself layout creator was so he can use his CNC machine. So you upload the file, and he imports that into his CNC machine. He's, he wrote his own software to do the translation, which is really cool, and then spits out one of these. You have the option for eyelets, you have the option for turrets, so depending on what you're looking for. Um, I drilled the hole here, so getting into the parts you're gonna need for this project, you're gonna want something like this. I'll put the link in below. But this is a Milwaukee step bit set and in here is a couple pilot hole drill bits, which are missing, they're on my messy bench, and two step bits. So you got this one that goes up to a half inch, and then the other one that goes up to uh, seven eighths. And between these two, it's everything you're gonna need for this project. Uh, my drill of choice is DeWalt 20 volt max. Uh, I'll put the link to that below as well. Um, and for those boards, I drew a pilot hole and used a step bit to make the hole the rest of it. Uh, during the design, I wanted to accommodate and project as many different sorts of amp builders expectations for a, a universal chassis of sorts or what they like in their design. So one of the considerations was for power input. Dumble used an Amphenol, uh, I believe it's a 120N connector uh, as seen here. And that fits in here as an electrical outlet. So if you basically you run, if you want to utilize that, here is an extension cord piece, and here is a strain relief. I didn't drill the hole for strain relief, but it would be right around here. That's where the step bit comes in. Again, I didn't want to make extra holes for those who don't want extra holes in their chassis, you know, just to be more uh, professional in the finished product. And plus, noise might leak in a little bit that way. But you're going to drill a hole, you're going to insert this, so clamp it down, and just keep on squeezing until it uh, relieves itself, and then you basically have a strain relief. The cable sits in there, and you can't even pull on it. So Fender uses this style, I think a few others, but, uh, you know, Dumble used it in his design. If you don't want that and you want an e EIC connector, check this out. That goes right in the hole, and the mounting points lines up pretty much dead on to the holes that are already there. So you have that as an option as well, which now you see the main reason why I didn't drill the other hole, because this is a pretty attractive alternative, especially because these um, sockets or these outlets are, are kind of expensive. I have one or two available, 
um, please reach out to me if, if you're interested in, in pitching in a little bit more and I'll send that with you uh, with the chassis order. So I do that. Um, you're going to see the Switchcraft jack. I don't really know how on Steel String Singer number two the wiring is done, but this is more of an aesthetic piece probably for the most part for instead of having a foot switch. But if, if someone out there wants to contribute back to the project and help me figure out how the foot switch worked in this amp, that would be pretty, that would be really appreciated. Um, so that's a, that's pretty much about it. Another thing you're going to really want is, is these digital calipers. I'll put that in the link below as well. This is going to help you measure precisely where something is. You can also then mark basically what I did for this board. Uh, I, that's how I got the 1.135 measurement. Look at that. Um, I measured the hole for a nine pin socket and then I did half of that and then I, I just basically did a mark and that's where I used as my guide for where the pilot hole should be. So I'm going to start building out those. Um, for mounting of the boards, I bought a couple standoffs, different style standoffs, different height standoffs. Amplify Parts has uh, two different kinds uh, or heights of standoffs and Hoffman Amps has another um, selection. So between the two I have a lot of choice and it's not that much ex you know, expensive. You might want something uh, a certain height that you feel comfortable with or whatever. So uh, if you look through my bomb you're going to see all the things that I've bought to accommodate. But the idea is to make this perfect I waited until I got the boards in before I drilled the holes to the chassis because I easily could have you know with my one-to-one -one printout and I still probably could just start drilling a hole into the chassis and then drill that same hole using that template onto the board itself but I figured I'll do that all in one shot so I'm gonna just lay this on here after I you know drilled the circular holes for my guide and then just take a drill straight down that will be my guide and then I'll start populating the boards all right uh, I started working on the preamp a little bit just the front face uh, panel going to have some pictures on my Google Photos. So if you really want to be the first person to know about everything, because I'm going to literally ever upload all my photos, everything, even this video the, in its raw form uh, is going to be on my Google Photos. So you can kind of see where I'm going before I publish it out and finish it, which is a little bit of a risk on my part, just because you're not going to see the fully, you know, produced piece on YouTube, but uh, I, I think the information, keeping it current, keeping you aware of where I am in the progress uh, is, is more of a sort of a bang for the buck PR wise for me. Um, right, so remember, a little bit of a discount if you go for this one, uh, $360 free shipping. And then we'll get going, we'll get, get, we're gonna rock this. Pretty confident, feeling good. You should too. Stick around.